Hi everybody. Welcome to your lesson that is all about the periodic table and how it is set up. Okay, so this is the periodic table that I want you to get very familiar with. You can Google a periodic table and come up with hundreds. This is the one that I want you to really focus on. When you take your eighth grade star in just a couple months, you will see this periodic table and I want you to be familiar with it and how it looks, okay? Um, you can notice that on this periodic table, you can see the atomic number, you can see the element symbol, you can see the atomic mass, and then the element name. Okay, not every periodic table has all of those information readily available for you. This one does, so I want you to be used to seeing it, okay? Now here on this periodic table, I've highlighted the metals, nonmetals, and metalloids for you. You might not see the highlight there in the eighth grade star um, periodic table, but if you hover over and click into the element, you might be able to get more information. But for now, I need you to know that this is the metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, okay? So if anything, commit that to memory. We're gonna talk about them more as we go through, okay? We're going to start first with metals. Okay, so first, metals are shiny. You know this. Metals are a solid at room temperature, except for mercury, which has the chemical symbol HG. Okay, Medical, uh, metals have a high conductivity, meaning that they can conduct heat and they can conduct electricity. And then metals are also malleable, meaning they can be flattened out. So if I were to take a hammer, and bang on a metal, I would flatten that metal out and it won't shatter and break. So that means it's malleable, okay? It can also be pulled into wire, um, meaning it's ductile, okay? You can flatten metals out or you can pull it into wire. They're malleable and they're ductile. Next, we have nonmetals. Nonmetals are dull, meaning they're not shiny. Nonmetals are mostly gaseous at room temperatures. Um, they're gases. Nonmetals are poor conductors. They don't conduct heat or electricity very well. And nonmetals are brittle. So if I were to bang a nonmetal with a hammer, um, if it were in a solid state, then it would shatter easily. And you cannot pull a nonmetal into a wire. It's not malleable, it's not ductile. And finally, we've got metalloids. Metalloids have characteristics that are sort of in between metals and nonmetals. Metalloids are a solid at room temperature, not gaseous, like um, so they're more like metals in that way. But metalloids are semiconductors. They're not great conductors like a normal metal would be. Okay, so here we have periodic trends. So remember that as you go from left to right, the me metallic properties decrease. So the more metal-like you are, you're gonna be over here. The least metal-like you are, you're gonna be over on this way. Okay, remember that your atomic numbers are increasing as you go down and across. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we get bigger as we go down and across, just like reading on a book, okay? Now remember that the periods, these are the those rows, they have the same number of rings, okay? So everybody in this row is gonna have one ring. Every run in the second row is gonna have two rings on their atoms. Everyone in this row is gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six rings on the atom because they have that many electrons, they gotta have six rings to fill them up, okay? So remember that the periods um, increase as you go down, okay? But also the valence electrons are going to increase across the period. So everyone is gonna have one valence electron here, two valence electrons here, three valence electrons over here, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So the number of valence electrons are gonna increase as you go across the period. Okay, remember that valence electrons are those Velcro electrons. They're the ones that are on the outermost ring. They're the ones that are trying to sucker themselves to other atoms to bond, okay? And they're going to increase down the uh, period. Remember that every um, 
every element in the same group, which is the row, are going to have the same amount of valence electrons, which is what that's telling us here, okay? Metallic properties are going to also increase as you go down um, in a group, all right? Okay, so here, let's see. Okay, so I know that this seems a little bit silly, but bear with me, okay? So let's answer some questions about periodic trends. Which elements have the same number of electrons on the outer shell? Remember, if they're having the same number on the outer shell, they have the same number of valence electrons, they're gonna be in the same group. So everyone here is gonna have the same valence electrons in this group, okay? And so hopefully, if I reveal the answer, this should say A and L, okay? So number two, which um, are the electrons on the outermost shell called? Hopefully you remember, valence electrons, or I like to call them Velcro electrons, but that's not the scientific name. Mm, don't put Velcro electrons on your star test. Put valence electrons, okay? Uh, which elements are in the same group? Well, remember, groups run vertically in columns, A and L are in the same group. Okay, but what are in the same period? What elements are in the same period? Okay, those that are in the same period, they're gonna run in the same row, not the same column, but the same row. So B and P are in the same row. So if I were to erase that part, hopefully you will see B and P. Which elements would be considered metals? Which elements are considered metals? A and L and B and P are all on that side of the, there's like a zigzag line that kind of goes along this way. And if A and L and B and P are on the left-hand side of that zigzag line, then they are considered metals. A, L, B, and P. If the atomic number of M is 15, what would be the atomic number of A. If this is 15, remember we count just like we read in a book. We go across and then we go down. So 16 would be A. Alrighty, let's make sure that that says 16. It does. We're the winners. Let's move on. All right, hopefully that was fun. So families and groups on the periodic table. Remember that elements on the periodic table can be grouped into families based on their chemical properties. Remember chemical properties means how many valence electrons they have and how many valence electrons they have tells us how reactive it is. Remember if it has little valence electrons, like maybe one or two, they're gonna be ping pong and a lot more trying to bond with other things um, or other atoms than an atom with eight valence electrons because they're stable and they're moving slowly and they're happy just as they are. They're not super reactive. They're not trying to bond with other atoms. Remember, each family has a specific name to differentiate it from other families, okay? so. Elements in each family are going to react differently with other elements. Let's talk about the families now. We're going to go kind of quick through them, okay? If you need to pause and take notes, feel free to do so. So here we have the alkali metals. I'm going to move my video here. Alkali metals have one electron in their outer shell. That means that they are in the first group. It means that they've got one valence electron. It means that they're super reactive because they only have one valence electron on the outer shell and that means that they're ping-ponging around a lot trying to bond with other things. So here we got lithium, one on the outer shell, sodium, one on the outer shell, potassium, one on the outer shell. These other ones, if you look very closely, you can see on the outer shell, they've only got one on the very out, one, L, um, uh, one electron on the outer shell there, okay? So they're super reactive, they're soft, silvery, shiny, and they're all metals. Um, they're gonna conduct electricity. Very good. Hydrogen is the top of this element, or I'm sorry, of this group. Even though it's not an alkali metal, it's not in the family of the alkali metals, but it is at the top. The reason why it's at the top is because it has one valence electron. It's only got one electron. And so it's obviously gonna have be a valence electron. So it's at the top of this group to show that it has one valence electron, even though it's not a metal, 
okay? Okay, now we've got our alkaline earth metals. These have two uh, electrons in its outer shell, showing that it's in group two, okay? So they are all metals. They're solids at room temperature. They're white, they're silvery. They're gonna be pretty reactive, but less reactive than alkali metals because they've got one more valence electron, so they're slightly less reactive, but they're still gonna be great conductors of electricity. Okay, so next we've got our transition metals. So this is in groups three through 12, and they've got varying numbers of electrons in the outer shell, um, which is why you might remember we kind of skip over the transition metals when we follow our rule of our groups that have one valence electron in group one, one valence electron in group two. We skip the transitions, and then we've got three valence electrons in this row, four, five, six, seven, eight. We skip the middle part here because they've got varying numbers of electrons in their outer shell. Okay, but they're all metals, and they're almost all our solids at room temperature except for mercury. Okay, that I mentioned uh, earlier in the video. Uh, that one's a liquid at room temperatures. They're all good conductors of heat and electricity, and they can bond with many elements in a variety of shapes. All right, now we've got the boron family. The boron family has three electrons in the outer shell. Remember, one here, two here. We skip the transitions and we start counting here at three. Okay, three electrons in the outer shell. Most of these are metals but boron is a metalloid, and it's somewhat reactive, and they're solid at room temp. So remember, if you remember me talking about the zigzag line, and along this zigzag line that happens through this part of the periodic table, you've got your metalloids. Boron is on that zigzag line, which makes it a metalloid. Okay. Next, we've got the carbon family. The carbon family has four electrons in its outer shell. It's in group four, one, two, three, four. It's in group 14, um, but it has the four electrons. Um, its reactivity varies in this group. Some of them are more reactive than others, okay? And they're solid at room temp. Group 15, it has five electrons in its outermost shell, and it can share electrons to form different compounds, and nitrogen is the only one that is a gas at room temp. The rest are solids. All right, now we've got the oxygen family, which is group 16. They've got six electrons in that outer shell. They are reactive. Oxygen is a gas, but the rest are solids at room temp. Okay, next we've got the halogens. Halogens have seven electrons in their outermost shell, and they are highly reactive. Okay, now finally, we've got the noble gases. So, noble gases are in group 18. They've got eight electrons in their outermost shell, meaning that they're full, okay? And so they're not going to be very reactive. Now, they're gonna exist mainly as gases, noble gases, and helium is the only one that's in this group that has two um, electrons, okay? And, but it's over here in this uh, group because it is full at two electrons. It does not need another ring. The inner ring that it has can only hold two, and so it's got those two. One ring for helium, so it's in this top row. Um, and it has two valence electrons, but it's full, so that's why they put it over here on this row instead of in the second. So it's not gonna be reactive with other elements. It's nice and full. Okay, finally, we've got those rare earth metals. Some of these are reactive. The rare earth metals are silver or silvery white. They can also be gray, and they're gonna be decent conductors of electricity. Now, I know that this was a lot to go through the different families and groups of the periodic table, so if you need to slow down and take some notes, feel free to do so, and reach out if you have any questions.